All right, in this video, we're going to handle one of the more complicated type of problems that one can have. I've got a sliding block on an inclined plane. The inclined plane has a certain inclination of theta. And it says that the thing, the block, a mass m, is sent initially up a speed of v naught. And it's going to go up to some point right here, turn around and come back the other way. And there is friction in this problem between this block and this plane. Now, as an inclined plane, it will always make your mass simpler if you choose to put one of your axes on the inclined plane. So we're going to definitely do that. So if that's x by a right-hand coordinate system, this would be y, going down like that. And I don't know this distance of how far it went up. I do know that when it gets to this point, Vx will be equal to zero on the way up. I also need to know whether or not this is a constant acceleration problem or not. I suspect that it may be, but I don't know that for sure. And in fact, it turns out that if you consider the time going up and down, you'll find that it's not a constant acceleration problem. So let's set this up and let's use Newton's laws and let's first thing let's do is find the acceleration. So here we have this block like this. And we're dealing with the up pattern. And in the up pattern, there will be the following. There will be a force of gravity down. There will be a normal force. And there will be a friction force, which I'll draw in a different color, that will oppose the motion, so it will be in this direction. And those are the only forces that are involved in this problem. I should also put that this angle there, that's theta. And again, our axis is x and y. So this is for the up part of the problem. Sum of the forces in x is equal to max. Sum of the forces in y is may. In the x direction, the normal has no component along x. The friction does. That's minus fs. 1 and the weight this component here which is the opposite side contributes so that's minus w sine theta and that's equal to m a x over here in the y direction the normal the way I've drawn my axis is minus the normal and the weight has a positive component along the y since I said positive y is down that's this side, the adjacent side, so that's plus W cosine theta. And because of the way I put my axis, there is no acceleration in Y. <clears throat> so I have that the normal force is equal to Mg cosine of theta. Well, remember the friction force is minus mu times the normal, minus Mg sine theta is m a x. I now may substitute this in for the normal and I get minus m g cosine theta minus m g sine theta is m a x and I can cancel out a mass so that will cancel that mass and that gives me that the acceleration, which by the way, I'm going to give a small symbol u to mean up, is equal to minus g. Oops, I lost a, a mu here on the previous line. Minus g mu cosine theta plus the sine. So that's acceleration on the way up. Sorry about losing that coefficient of friction. 
So g is a constant, the coefficient of friction is a constant, the cosine for a fixed angle is a constant, and the sine for a fixed angle is a constant. So this is constant, and one may apply the kinematic equations on the way up. And so we'll do that. And two things I'd like to know on the way up is how far does the block slide before it comes to rest, and it turns around, and what's the time it takes to do that. Well, let's see, x is equal to x naught plus v x naught t plus one half a x, this would be u, t squared. I know that v x is v x naught plus a x going up times time, and v x squared is v x naught squared plus two times a x u, the acceleration on the way up, times x minus x naught. We can simplify those equations a little bit. x naught was zero in each case. The final velocity on the way up is zero in each case. And let's simplify that there. So, <clears throat> I don't know x. And I don't know t. There's two unknowns. So that would not be the equation I'd want to start attacking. If I look at the second equation here, vx naught is simply the initial velocity v naught. axu is minus g times mu cosine theta plus sine theta. I have that right here. So I have a formula, know that. So the only unknown in this problem is time. So I can determine the time it takes to go up. I want to give that a little subscript and call that TU. So the time on the way up is equal to minus V naught over minus G times mu cosine theta plus sine theta or we can just get rid of those two minus signs. So that's the time it takes to go up. Now that I know the time it takes to go up I also would like to know the distance, that is x. Well, this equation has vx naught, which I know. It has 2. It has ax, which I know. The only thing I don't know is x. I can solve that for the distance. So x is going to be equal to minus v naught squared divided by 2 times a minus g, which will cancel that minus mu cosine theta plus sine theta. So that's the distance I go up. It also turns out to be the distance that I will go down when I solve the next part of the problem. So I need these two parts of the problem So I can tell you how long it takes to go up the inclined plane, and I can tell you how far it went up the inclined plane. Now let's start the problem on the way down. So to start the problem on the way down, I've got to redraw a free body diagram again. So here is my free body. My coordinate axis isn't changing. There's still x. There's still y. But the forces are, and acceleration are not the same. There's the weight going down. There's the normal force going perpendicular to the surface of contact. But in this case, the friction force is pointing in the opposite direction. I call that FS2. And there's my angle theta. So, we said about doing Newton's laws again. The sum of the forces is equal to mAx. Sum of the forces in y 
is MAY. In the X direction, the forces I have this part of the weight, which would be minus W sine theta, and the friction force, which is now pointing in the positive X direction, plus FS2 is equal to MAX. In the Y direction, I have the normal pointing in the minus Y, based on my coordinate system, plus W cosine theta, and that's equal to zero because of the way I set up my coordinate system. This gives us minus mg sine theta plus mu n is equal to max. And this equation over here we solve for n gives us mg cosine theta. Plugging this in for n, I get minus mg sine theta plus mu mg cosine theta is max. And we see I can cancel an m, kill that m, that m, and that m. And now I have a sub x is equal to g, but this time it's mu cosine theta minus sine theta. So again, this is constant. Mu is constant. Cosine for fixed angle is constant sine. But it's not the same acceleration as before. So I could not work the problem in one step all the way up and all the way back because in that case the kinematic equations would not have been valid because acceleration wasn't a constant. However, if I work it on the way down, which I'm going to give this a little subscript d, then on the way down, the acceleration is constant, kinematics are true. If you only treat the way up, the kinematics say that they're true because the acceleration is constant. So I've still got to go ahead now and solve for the time it takes to come down. I know the distance. The distance that it comes down is the same as the distance it went up, but the time won't be because acceleration is not the same. So in the next video I will finish this problem.